Hey everyone, welcome back to Gold Souls. So I know it's been a while since my last video. I was actually production designing a short film as soon as school got out, so I've been busy with that for the past few weeks and then since then just working on a few other projects. Hopefully you guys have been keeping up with the Instagram page for Gold Souls. I try to update that as much as I possibly can. So today we're gonna to be talking about one of my favorite topics, which is music and more specifically vinyl. I started listening to vinyl records when I was about a sophomore in high school. Uh, that's kind of when record players started coming back onto the scene again and people my age were listening to records and I was like oh that seems really cool and I think it was the end of sophomore year my dad told me that because I got good grades I could pick any kind of purchase or gift that I wanted so I decided that I wanted a record player as most 16 year olds do I got a Crosley portable record player with flowers all over it and four records to go along with it. Those records were The Complete 2020 Experience by Justin Timberlake, Songs in A Minor by Alicia Keys, Rubber Soul by The Beatles, and Ghost Stories by Coldplay. So over the years, I've made a few more vinyl purchases and I've graduated to a little bit of a more sophisticated turntable setup. Now, the majority of my record collection actually consists of albums from my mom and my grandma. Here are a few of my favorite records in my collection. So this is an original copy of The Best of Sam Cooke. I believe this was released in 1965. When I first discovered this record, it was when we moved to a new house. When we, I found a bunch of my mom and my grandma's old records. This actually belonged to my grandmother on my mom's side. At the time, I think I was probably 17, I didn't actually know who Sam Cooke was, and I decided to just put it on and take a listen. My mom heard it playing in the other room, and she came in and she was like, oh my goodness, I haven't heard that in years. My mom used to play that all the time, and it was really cool because it brought back a lot of good memories for her. And um, my grandmother passed away when I was five, so I like listening to this because it makes me think of her, and I think it's a nice connection that I can still have um, musically to who she was, and the things that she enjoyed. After Sam Cooke, I think I have to talk about another one of my favorite artists who actually got a ton of inspiration from him. Steve Perry is one of my all-time favorite artists. I believe this is his first solo album called Street Talk, released in 1984. Um, this is when Journey was kind of on a little bit of a break and he decided to go out and make his own album and it's honestly incredible. The vocals on this are crazy. You actually can hear a lot of Sam Cooke influences in the way that Steve sings. And to continue the chain of musical connections, we've got to talk about Journey. They pretty much got me through last fall semester. It was one of the most stressful semesters of my life and all I listened to was Journey. So this is their greatest hits album. It's a reissue. It's a compilation of songs from the late 70s to the 80s and everything. So it's got all the hits that you could ever want on this. And I believe it's a, it's a two disc. Um, can't be two discs. These aren't discs. This collection of hits has two records, so you got four sides of songs to listen to. Um, I've actually really wanted an original copy of a Journey album, I don't have one yet, um, and I've been kind of waiting around before buying one that's a reissue. So I do this with a lot of classic albums, I always wonder like, do I buy this right now, like in the store, the reissues, or should I wait until I can find a good deal on an original copy? If I could have all original copies, I would, but sometimes I just don't have the patience and I have to buy them when I see it. So I actually saw this in Barnes & Noble and I had to get it. Um, I'll show you the inside. It's actually really beautiful. So as you can see, it's got some really great tour pictures of the boys. This is like prized in my collection. I tried to get an original copy of this. They were so expensive. So I bought uh, this reissue of In the Wee Small Hours. This album came out in, it doesn't say. So this album came out in 1955, could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure this is like one of the first concept albums that ever came out. Um, Frank Sinatra was like the first artist, as far as I know, and from what I've read, to actually make an album based around a theme, and these songs all kind of go together. A lot of artists that you find in like the 50s and 60s put out stuff that was like a collection of standards. Not all the songs related to each other in any way, whereas all of these songs have to do with being sad and lonely after a breakup. It's kind of depressing, but I love it. I think Frank sounds wonderful, and um, all the songs and the lyrics are so emotional and compelling. So I 
though I said the Freak album was a prized possession, this one really, this one's really, it speaks for itself. It kind of, doesn't it speak for itself? I don't even have to say anything. Maybe I should just put this way. I'm done. You get it, right? So this is an original copy of Purple Rain that belonged to my mom when she was in high school. I believe this album dropped in 1984 and it's one of my favorites because it's so iconic, first of all, and it's just a dope album and the movie is amazing. I listened to this on repeat so much when I found it. This is The Innocent Age by Dan Vogelberg. I was actually doing a location scout for a film at a cafe and there was a record store next door so I went over there while I should have been helping scout. So I ran over there and I started sifting through the one dollar bin. Can you believe this? A dollar for Dan Vogelberg? I don't know if I should be like insulted or grateful. I'm kind of a mixture of both. Like I'm glad it was in the one dollar bin so I could like buy it along with like three others. But man, this deserved to be up there with the other ones at full price. Dan Vogelberg is one of my favorite songwriters. I wish I could have met him. I really do. What I love about this is that it actually comes with a book of all the lyrics. Usually the lyrics are on like the, the other jacket that the record is in, but I really love that this has a little book for everything. Okay, so this next album, ooh, top notch, top notch. Eagles, their greatest hits from 1971 to 1975. This is actually the best selling album of all time. Last I checked, it outsold Thriller, which is really insane. And it's the best selling greatest hits album of all time. This album was originally released in 1976, I'm pretty sure. This album is really special to me because I actually grew up listening to a lot of um, 70s rock. Eagles was in the car all the time when we drove to California back when I used to live in Arizona. And so I grew up listening to these songs and these are songs that my dad really loved when he was growing up and in high school. So being able to listen to these songs with him is really cool and I've been able to bond with him over uh, some of his favorite music, which has been really special to me. This kind of music just reminds me of the desert and Arizona and long road trips and it just makes me feel happy. So that's why I love it so much. We got all the bops, all of them. This one's such a bop, such a fun album. Like this is so much fun. If you've never listened to this album, you need to stop this video right now and just listen to it. I don't care if it's on vinyl, I don't care if it's on Spotify, just listen to it right now. It is so much fun. I love Wham. I love this album. Need I say more? George Michael was a genius. This is an original copy of Bee Gees Spirits Having Flown from 1979. So good, so good. And whoever sold this to me, great quality. They have this wonderful protective sleeve on it. On the inside, they've got this really great protective jacket for the record. It's pristine, perfect quality, doesn't skip at all. One of my favorite albums by the Bee Gees. The artwork on this is really wonderful too. I don't know if you can really see because the plastic. Here, I'll take it out. Look at that, look at their short shorts. Inspiring, honestly. Inside is dope, really great photography. So this album was a gift to me from my roommate, Olivia, and we actually went and saw Hollow Notes together two years ago now, oh my gosh. September 2017, we saw Hollow Notes live at the Staples Center. We were like 14th row, they did all the hits, and then uh, Tears for Fears actually played right before them, which was incredible. For my birthday, which wasn't too long after, I believe, she got me this album. Uh, it's a reissue of uh, Rock and Soul Part 1, 1983, and the reissue was 2017. So inside, we got this really great picture of the boys on the jacket that the actual record is in, and it also came with this really cool 1984 calendar that had uh, a different album cover for every month of the year on it and I had that up on my wall pretty much the rest of that school year. So it's a special album to me because of the friend that gave it to me because of the experience behind it and it's just got so many good songs. So last but not least, not least by any means, Fleetwood Mac Rumors. I think the cover I think the name, I think the band speaks for itself. I don't even know what I can honestly say about this album other than that it's perfect. This album came out in 1977. This is a reissue from 2009. It's got some really great pictures of the band. And I've also seen this band live with my roommate, Olivia. One of my favorite concerts ever. They were so good. Stevie was incredible. Seeing Fleetwood Mac live was 100% 
a bucket list moment for me. This is one of my favorite albums to listen to on a rainy day, on a sunny day, on a sad day, on a happy day, any day. Fleetwood Mac is pretty much always playing in my room, and so to have it on vinyl is that much more special to me, and hopefully one day I can actually get my hands on an original copy, which would be so nice. Listening to records is really important to me because it actually makes music very tangible, something you can hold in your hand, something you have to maintain and take care of and collect and physically curate. I think listening to vinyl makes me appreciate the album artwork a lot more. You can really see it like in its full size and really get to take it all in. And it also forces me to listen to an entire album front to back and appreciate the artistry and hard work and the arrangement of the tracks. Collecting older records is the best because it puts you directly in touch with the past. Having an original copy, being able to like hold it in your hand and know that somebody actually owned this before you and they took care of it and now it's being passed down to you. And just knowing that this album actually had a whole other life in another home is really interesting to me. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I love talking about music and sharing my favorites. If you listen to vinyl too, let me know in the comments what your favorite albums are, some of your favorite songs, or why you like to listen to vinyl. Don't forget to like and subscribe and please follow Gold Souls on Instagram. See you soon.